So we just got the very first sodium ion power station announced by Blue Yeti. This battery cost $800 delivers 900 watt hours of capacity and can operate in ultra low temperatures. But the bigger question here is what exactly is this newer sodium ion battery technology and how does it stack up against the current lithium iron phosphate battery technology? So when it comes to these new sodium ion batteries, they of course use sodium, which is a very cheap and abundant material. And for context, existing LFP batteries use a combination of lithium with iron and phosphate, which are also pretty abundant elements. But ultimately, sodium ion batteries do have the cost advantage, and it could be as much as 30%. Now, alongside the cost per watt hour, another key metric of batteries is the energy density, or the watt hours per kilogram. And here, sodium ion batteries are actually a downgrade versus lithium iron phosphate. So as of right now, sodium ion is around 150 watt hours per kilogram, and LFP is around the 180 watt hour mark. And this is a key metric to understand. So while sodium ion batteries are cheaper per watt hour than LFP, they also are lower performance with a lower watt hour per kilogram reading. But a final major consideration here is the durability of the actual batteries. Historically, batteries are pretty finicky. They have limited charge cycles and things like the ambient temperature can have a pretty big impact on them. And on this metric, sodium batteries again have an advantage and they're actually able to fully operate charge and discharge in well below freezing temperatures. And these are conditions where existing lithium iron phosphate batteries simply could not operate, they might even get damaged, and they would require heaters and extra equipment to function properly. So based off of these three metrics, we can get a pretty good picture of the pros and cons of sodium ion batteries. Unfortunately, these are not high performance batteries and they have a lower energy density than existing LFP batteries. However, they are cheaper to produce, costing less per watt hour, and they're more resilient to extreme weather conditions and possibly could provide more life cycles in the future as the technology continues to evolve. So with these characteristics, it makes sodium ion batteries potentially really good for stationary, large capacity energy storage. So we're talking applications like energy grid storage and potentially even home backup systems. You can get a lot of capacity for a cheap price and you don't have to worry about keeping it in a heated or air conditioned location. But when it comes to the more high tech applications like EVs, mobile smartphones, sodium ion batteries are unfortunately not going to replace existing lithium iron phosphate or other specialized battery chemistries. And these are the exact characteristics we see on this new Blue Yeti sodium ion battery power station. They advertise the battery as being able to function in well below freezing temperatures, but we can see the unit weighs 35 pounds with only 900 watt hours of capacity. In comparison, my EcoFlow Delta 3 has 100 watt hours of additional capacity and weighs only 27 pounds. And this of course uses an LFP battery. But let us know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one.